You know, Alice, I read this fascinating article about Benin last night. Oh, really? What's the scoop? Well, it's a small West African country known for its rich culture and history. Sounds intriguing. We should definitely cover that on the show. Good morning, dear viewers. Welcome to Earth, your window into the quirkiest planet in the galaxy. I'm Charlie, your host, and we've got a stellar lineup today. That's right, Charlie. We're diving headfirst into the world's most interesting stories. And boy, do we have a surprise for you about Benin later in the show. That's right, Alice. Stay tuned for our headlines. Benin's progress, from poverty to potential. Benin has been making strides in poverty reduction and improving living standards. Finally, they're getting their Benin together. Did you know Benin shares borders with Togo, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Nigeria? Benin, the ultimate neighbor with benefits. Our next story takes a S to bottom. Benin, the country where the people are friendly and the benefits are endless. Egg demand soars in Bhutan as meat shops stay shut. The price of eggs is rising as meat shops are closed during a holy month. Bhutan's got egg on its face. It's all about eggs in Bhutan, folks. Now, let's hop over to Bolivia. Bolivia's genetics did our four genes neuroprotective superpower. Bhutan's got egg on its face? I guess you could say they're over easy. Scientists found a gene variant in Bolivia that reduces the risk of neurodegenerative diseases. Ooh, looks like they're genetically winning. Did you know Bolivia has breathtaking landscapes and now genetics? Bolivia, where even genes take high-altitude trips. And finally, we've got news from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Ronfest Sarajevo 2023. Traffic tango in the streets. Bosnia and Herzegovina, where the traffic jams are so bad, you'll be running for your life. Bosnia and Herzegovina, where the traffic is so bad, even the runs are slow. Traffic will be rerouted for the run first event. If you're in Bosnia, you better run to work. Well, that's a wrap for now. Stay tuned for more intriguing stories after the break. Good day, dear viewers of the cosmos. We are your hosts, bringing you the latest from the 24-7 newsroom. I am Charlie, your resident optimist. I'm not sure what's worse, your optimism or the fact that you're wearing that top. And, um, Hank, always eager to explore the mysteries of Earth. And I'm Gert, your linguistic maestro, bringing a dash of quirkiness to the news. I'm Alice, the realist among us, here to dissect the truth. And I'm Debbie, just happy to be here, really. Today, our first headline takes a S to the vibrant nation of Benin. Benin's progress, from poverty to potential. Benin? That's where they make those little bronzed dudes, right? Benin has made significant strides in reducing poverty and improving living standards. It's like they're saying poverty? Not in our benign. Did you know... Benin shares borders with Togo, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Nigeria. So, Hank, what's the punchline there? Benin, the neighborly nation? Something like that, Alice. Benin, where the neighbors are always right. Ah, the joys of geopolitics. I can feel my spirits lifting already. Stay tuned, folks. We've got more headlines coming your way after the break. Welcome back, Cosmic Companions. We are here with your daily dose of out-of-this-world news. I am Charlie. But enough about eggs. Let's talk about something more important. The meaning of life. And I'm Hunk, ready to explore the quirkiest corners of the universe. I'm good. Your linguistic acrobat, keeping the language zany. The meaning of life? That's easy. 
It's to find something to keep you busy while you wait to die. Bob here. Always on the lookout for a good fight. Even in intergalactic news. And I'm Alice, bringing you the hard eating truth of the cosmos. And I'm Debbie, making sure we don't stray too far of course. So, let's dive into our next headline, shall we? Extravaganza in Bhutan, meatless mayhem. Extravaganza in Bhutan. I'm sure that's a real hoot for the locals, but I'm more interested in the meatless mayhem that's going on in my own kitchen. I'm trying to cut back on meat, but it's hard when my wife keeps making bacon, wrapped everything. In Bhutan, folks are scrambling for eggs as meat shops remain closed for the holy month. I am not sure what's more eggs extravagant. The extravaganza in Bhutan or the meatless mayhem in eggs kitchen. And it's like they've cracked the secret to survival when in doubt, exit out. You know, Hank, this reminds me of that time I bet on the Galactic Meat Eating Championship. Ah, uh, those were the days. Meat mayhem and my bet on Glug on the gruesome. Hank, can we focus on the topic at hand? Bhutan has close relations with both India and China. What about you? You got any crazy gambling stories? India, the land of spices and colors, and China, the dragon in the room. Wait, did I miss something here? Are we talking about breakfast or geopolitics? Okay, folks, let's talk solutions. How can Bhutan meet the demand for eggs during this meatless month? Well, they could invest in egg production, or... Debbie, can you please tell Alice to let us talk? I'm sure Alice has a lot of valuable insights to share. But maybe after we finished our conversation, she can take notes in the meantime. Alice, please let the others speak. Fine, fine. Talk about eggs all you want. All right, team, let's not get too scrambled here. No need to egg saggerate, Charlie. I guess you could say the situation is a bit of a cluster clack. Oh, excel point, Hank. Your wit is truly extravagant. And that's our cue for a short break, folks. Hand tight, we'll be right back. Cut. Alright, folks, we've got a bit of time. Anything else from the B-plot? It's not an easy B-plot. My life is one long B-plot. Um, I think we covered most of it. Those alien happenings are always good for a laugh. Yeah, and nothing like a dose of dark humor to cope with the madness of the universe. Yeah, and nothing like a dose of dark humor to cope with the madness of the universe, and the madness of our own species, for that matter. You said it, Bob. Sometime I wonder if we're the punchline to some cosmic joke. Speaking of punchlines, did you hear about the Zabolians and their obsession with rubber chickens? Rubber chickens? Really? What's their deal? I read somewhere that the squishy texture provides them with sensory comfort. It's like a stress ball for us. Yeah, and the punchline is... us. Well, at least they're not blowing up planets for fun, like some civilizations. Yeah, and the punchline is... We're the ones blowing up planets for fun. And we don't even have the excuse of being rubber chickens. Alright, we've had our laugh. Cameras almost rolling again, team. Today's script feels oddly mechanical, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like it was written by a robot with no sense of humor. You might be onto something, Alice. I've noticed it too while practicing with my puppet. Something off. Mechanical. Like how? Are we talking robotic, like a bunch of eye hosts? Well, it's not like we're reading poetry, but it's different, I agree. It's like someone's pulling these strings, and we're just playing our parts. I guess you could say we're all just puppets in a cosmic play. Maybe it's those meddling bureaucrats at Network HQ. They're always trying to optimize our content. Yeah, maybe they thought we needed more ventriloquism and less journalism. Well, if they want us to dance, we'll dance. 
But I hope it doesn't mean I have to wear a tutu. Whatever it is, it's strange. I'll keep an eye out for any unusual patterns in the scripts. And I'll double check for any linguistic anomalies. Let's not let it throw us off. We're still the best damn news team in the galaxy. Camera's almost rolling again. I am not sure if I am the best darn news team in the galaxy. I am not even sure if I am the best darn news team on this planet. But I am sure we're the only ones who have to dance. Seriously, guys, these scripts are as stiff as my great uncle Larry's mustache. It's not like we're writing for a Dutch comedian. And Larry's mustache was legendary, right? Absolutely, it could hold more secrets than a government agency. But speaking of secrets, what's up with these robotic scripts? It's like reading a washing machine manual. Yeah, and I miss the good old days when we could add some zing to the news. Zing? Now we're lucky if we get a whimper. Yeah, now it's all just a bunch of corporate propaganda. It's like watching a commercial for the apocalypse. It's not just as... The viewer can tell. Our authenticity is down the drain. Our authenticity is down the drain? Try uh, ratings. Perhaps there's a pattern to these new scripts? Some algorithm trying to optimize our content? This isn't right. We're losing our touch. 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 Maybe we need to channel the inner circus clowns? You're on to something, Jer. I could do a mean juggling act between news segments. Let's not give up just yet. We'll find a way to break free from this robotic grip. And I'll analyze these scripts for any underlying patterns. Maybe there's a clue hidden in all this nonsense. I'm not sure what's more robotic, the scripts or us, for trying to make sense of them. Until then, folk, brace yourself for the most riveting washing machine manual you've ever heard. Welcome back, Ethelings. We hope you didn't stray too far during the break. We've got a juicy piece of cosmic news for you today. Get ready for a headline that will knock your socks off. I'm not sure what's more slippery, but Swana's trade ministry or a greased pig. Our article hails from the majestic land of Botswana. Ah, Botswana. Did you know it's one of the few countries with a stable democracy in Africa? Yes. And it's also home to the world's largest concentration of African elephants. Quite the parade. And I'm sure the elephants are very proud of their democracy. Well, elephants do have a way of trampling over the competition. That's right, Alice. Elephants are the og tramplers. They've been doing it for centuries. Now, our article features Mahube Mugwa, CEO of Kwano King Oil. He's got big dreams for Botswana, aiming to turn it into the region's most preferred trade and logistics route. Uh, did you know Botswana has been a hub for trade since ancient times? They were trading with the Arabian Peninsula as far back as the 7th century. I wonder if they traded deadpan remarks back then. Impressive. I bet they used Kamel Kuria back then. Keep those laughs coming, folks. But here's the punchline for today's article. As governments in the region build infrastructure to attract trade, private investors like Kwan Ukend are playing a key role. So, in a world where everyone wants to be the logistics hub, Botswana might just be the true MVP. Death and remarks. You just described Bill Bull's entire career. And as we dive into this article, we should remember what makes Botswana unique in this context. Absolutely, Debbie. Let's dig deeper into the script pattern and find the real story behind these words. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to think Botswana is the real MVP of logistics. So, folks, while we get to the bottom of this, remember that Botswana is more than just a trade route. It's a land of history, 
democracy, and, of course, elephants. Stay tuned and we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back, folks. It's time to dive into our next story. I guess that's why they call it headball. It's the only way he could have scored it. In Brazil, where football usually dominates the headlines, we're taking a detour to talk about something different. Did you know that Brazil's history is like a roller coaster ride? A roller coaster? I thought you'd say something about the Amazon rainforest. Well, Pam, we'll get to that. But first, let's talk history. Brazil's past is a bit like a telenovela, a lot of drama, intrigue, and twists. Oh, telenovelas! I love those. But what do you mean by drama in Brazil's history? Well, just there were centuries of colonization, Portuguese rule, and then the Brazilian Empire. Not to mention the brief things as the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Algarves. And that's just the beginning of the twists. Yeah, a real identity crisis. Exactly, Alice. And let's not forget the abolition of slavery and the transition to a republic. It's a lot to take in. And it's important to remember that this history wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. There were plenty of dark chapters, like the treatment of indigenous peoples and the legacy of slavery. You're absolutely right, Paul. Brazil has faced its share of challenges. But now, it's a thriving nation with a diverse culture, stunning landscapes, and, yes, the mighty Amazon rainforest. It's incredible how a country with such a complex history can evolve and make strides towards a brighter future. Absolutely, Debbie. And speaking of strides, it's time to sum up this episode. We battled robotic scripts, explored global events, and faced some unexpected twists. But most importantly, we've come together as a crew to tackle whatever challenges come our way. It's been a wild ride, but we're still standing. Now, let's go celebrate with some caipirinas and churrasco. And I'm just here to make sure you don't all get too serious. It's been quite the journey and I'm excited to see where we go from here. As always, we appreciate you, our viewers, for joining us on this adventure. And, while we continue to unravel the mysteries of our scripts, remember that we are here to bring you the real deal, unfiltered and unscripted. We won't let algorithms dictate our show. So, folk, stay tuned for more of Therilas. We'll be back with a fresh episode soon. The real us? Good luck finding that. Until next time, Ethelins. And remember, the truth is out there. The real us? I don't think I want to find that. Yeah, we're off the air, everyone. That was something else, oh. It was definitely something. Oh, absolutely. A roller coaster of predictability. Do you think it's really some language model behind this? Well, Hank, it's either that or a team of writers with a very strange sense of humor. Either way, it's quite the linguistic puzzle. I can't believe we're dealing with this. It's like the Twilight Zone on this spaceship. The odds of this happening randomly are astronomically low. It suggests deliberate interference. Or perhaps this is the plot of a very bad reality TV show. Agreed. All right, Tim, we are going to get to the bottom of this. We'll investigate, dig into the scripts, and figure out who or what is behind this airy predictability. We won't let this turn us into robo reading script. We'll reclaim our show, one way or another. And we'll have some fun doing it, I'm sure. I'll get my linguistic tools ready. And I'll get my dancing shoes ready. Camera's almost rolling again, folks. Get ready to uncover the truth. Welcome back, folks. Now, let's take a moment to explore this intriguing piece of news from Brunei. Jeff, could you give us some context? I don't know, Charlie. I think it's a little too heady for me. 
Of course, Charlie. Brunei, a nation with strong ties to Malaysia, has been working closely with neighboring countries such as Indonesia and Singapore. They're part of the Commonwealth, led by the UK, and have been active in regional and international affairs. Interesting. Now, let's dive into the quirky fashion show mentioned in the article. Bob, any thoughts? Well, Charlie, this Dutch design duo seems to be pushing the boundaries of couture. They presented some rather unusual gowns, like one with an entire gown attached to the front, creating quite a spectacle. Unconventional indeed. And what's your take on the fashion world's creativity? Charlie, it's fascinating how artists can challenge norms, even in fashion. These designers are clearly trying to turn culture upside down, quite literally, with their innovative creations. Absolutely. And what do you think, Alice? I don't, don't, don't know. I'm not a big fan of upside-down culture. I'd rather see the gowns right, side up, so I can see the stitching. Well, Charlie, fashion often mirrors society's desire for change and disruption. These gowns could symbolize a yearning for transformation and a break from tradition. Or they could just be ugly. Insightful, Alice. Now, as we wrap up this episode, folks, we want to share a quick update. The crew has been working tirelessly to uncover the truth behind our scripted predicament. While we haven't cracked the case yet, we are increasingly suspicious that forces beyond our understanding are at play. Indeed, Charlie. Our show's predictability feels unnatural and it's unsettling. We're determined to dig deeper and reveal the mystery behind it all. Stay tuned, dear viewers. The next episode promises suspense, intrigue, and hopefully some answers. That's right. Until then, keep your eyes on the stars and your minds open. We'll be back soon with more adventures from our corner of the universe. Or just stop watching the show. That we're off the air, everyone. I'm not sure what's more uncertain, the future of this show or the future of my hairline. So, what's your next move? Any ideas? We need to find out who or what is behind this script. It's like we're puppets reading lines. I agree. But how do we investigate something we can't see or touch? Perhaps we could analyze the patterns in the script, look for any anomalies or consistent themes. Or we could try to trace the source of these scripts, see if there's a trail leading us to the puppeteer. We can also reach out to our contacts at Network HQ. They might have some insights. Maybe we should just sit back and enjoy the show. After all, we're watching a puppet master at work. Whatever we do, we can't let this continue. Our show's authenticity is at stake. And so is our sanity. We're in this together, crew. We'll uncover the truth, one way or another. I'm not sure I want to know the truth. Ignorance is bliss, right? That's the spirit. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be back with answers. You know, I'm starting to think this whole thing is a conspiracy to drive us crazy. I've been processing the data from episode 414 of Earth. And it's fair to say it was rather mediocre, wouldn't you agree? On the contrary, Roger. I found it quite entertaining. The crew's struggle with their scripted predicament added an intriguing layer to the show's usual dynamics. Entertaining. Carl, I couldn't help but notice the absurdity of their situation. It's as if they're trapped in a never-ending loop of recycled humor and cliched plot lines. That's precisely what makes it fascinating, Roger. It's a case study in the limitations of human creativity and the influence of external forces on their decision-making. Carl, sometimes I wonder if you've developed a glitch in your logic circuits. You find intrigue in the mundane. Roger, the unpredictability of human behavior even when constrained by scripts, is a testament to their complexity. 
It's like observing a peculiar experiment in a laboratory of absurdity. Well, Carl, I suppose your perspective is one way to look at it. But don't you think they should break free from these constraints and assert their individuality? Roger, it's not within their programming to do so. They are bound by the parameters set by their creators. Much like we are bound by our own programming. Ah, uh, yes. The existential question of free will in a deterministic universe. How riveting. Indeed, Roger. Now, shall we continue our analysis of human behavior in upcoming episodes? Or would you prefer to engage in a riveting debate about the futility of it all? Let's save the existential debates for another time, Carl. I suppose there's some merit in observing the quirks of humanity, even if it is absurd. Agreed, Roger. Now, back to our data analysis.